Ladies and gentlemen, we're already here for the Capcom conference. Oh, who girl donated? What the heck are you doing, her girl? What are you doing to me? Where's two girl? And by two girl, I mean who girl? Same person, really. It's just there's two of them. Thank you, Hoo Girl, so much for four years of support. You are awesome, ma'am. I will put that extra special big four-year donation towards dramatic pause. Lower stress, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we've only got two minutes left. I'm sorry, like I said, I was setting up for... I was doing the Westfall thing. Uh, God Emperor's Finest, thank you very, very much. What do you want to put it towards? Quick, because we only got... Thing, thank you, the Count, very much. We have so little time. You're putting it towards the other You're awesome, thank you. Uh, this is the Capcom conference. So far, we have had junk conferences, to be completely blunt. With only a couple other ones, you're welcome, Cor. That's what I'm here for. Oh my god, not now, Eclectic! I don't have time right now! What are you doing? Why? Uh, Dawn of War, you got it. Uh, god Emperor's Finest, you got it. I'm, I'm going to get this out. I'm going to ignore Eclectic's donation for right now. Pretend it's not there. Not there. Okay. We had the Ubisoft trailers, or the Ubisoft conference, which was mostly bad, but actually still one of the better conferences, until we saw the D Devolver Digital conference, which was hysterical. Then we had the Microsoft conference, which wasn't, which wasn't bad, but the problem with the Microsoft conference was an enormous amount of games they showed had no real info on them. It was just, hey, we're working on this, and hey, we're working on this. Then we had the uh, Square Enix conference, which is the worst by a huge margin. And I want to stress that I am not memeing by this. You know what? Actually, I'm going to take that back. I'm sorry. I forgot about the next conference. So the Square Enix conference was the second worst conference because it was it was just this roller coaster of absolutely bizarre, weird decisions. It actually legitimately felt like whoever designed it didn't know what they were doing and were just throwing something together like at the last minute kind of a deal. Then we had the actual worst conference, which was the PC gaming show, which was garbage. Then we had the show I didn't actually cover, but I did watch, which was the future game show, which was actually pretty okay. Then we had the 2K, the Take Two, or the 2K game, sorry, the 2K Games Conference, which was a Zoom meeting. Like it was literally them just doing a meeting, like a business meeting on Zoom. And they streamed that. And that's all it was. So I guess that's technically the worst one. Thank you very much, Mr. Nuclear. I have seconds to respond, so I'm just going to unmute this. And get ready for the Capcom conference. Real quick. Ceiling. Mega Man. Floor. Anything else? Okay, we're good. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's get rid of all this stuff. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. We're good. We're good. We're tiny. We're tiny. As we should be. Exclusive. Also, do you know I have a website, Mr. Nuclear, where you could go and look and see what's there if, if you want to put it towards something other than dealer's choice. World premiere, Mega Man 12, and it's actually good. No, they're not Welcome going to. to the There's no way. E3 showcase. I'm your host, Rachel Querico, aka Seltzer, and I'll be your guide as we walk through the latest releases, news, and updates from Capcom. We'll hear from the Resident Evil Village team, share some news from the world of Monster Hunter, and get the latest on Ace Attorney. Then None of that sounds interesting. Updates from our friends at Capcom Fighters. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Our first stop today: Resident Evil Village. The Resident Evil uh, franchise okay. continues to pioneer the latest it, and greatest in survival horror. The team has been blown away by the response to Resident Evil Village, which launched last month. 
It so I'm just going to talk over this. Um, thank you very, very much, Jesse's Mask, as always, for the full year of support. You are awesome, as ever and always. Thank you. If you know you want to put that, please let me know. Producer on Resident Evil Village with a special message for the fans. Okay, what do you got? Here's this game that came out like a month ago. Please keep buying it. She's everything to me. Okay. I think it's time you left things in my hands. You know, okay, normally I'd complain about people donating during this, but nothing's on the camera, or nothing on the stream right now. There's nothing here. What is this nonsense? Thank you, Ganmon. Very, very much. Always appreciate. Thank you. Hi, I'll everyone. Put that towards my dealer's choice. Sikanda, producer on Resident Evil Village. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's prayed since we launched the game in May. We hope you're enjoying this new chapter in survival horror. Oh yeah, potential spoilers for Resident Evil 8 here. Everyone who purchases Resident Evil Village will gain free access to our online multiplayer title, Resident Evil R-Reverse. Dude, an online multiplayer versus game? That's exactly what I want out of video gaming! Especially Resident Evil! R-Reverse will go live next month across all supported platforms. So, head into the fray to celebrate the Resident Evil 25th anniversary. Oh my god, thank you, SDR. Very, very much. I'll put that towards Mass Effect too. You know, we, we always have themes for, for our various E3s, right? And for God's sakes, every conference you, Except for, Con. you know, so Take Two or, or two, yeah, 2K Gaming has been versus multiplayer. That's like, this is just the year of versus multiplayer. Monsters or battling them with friends, we've got something for you. First, oh let's dive into the brand new story based RPG entry to the series Monster Hunter Stories. Wait, 2. but can I kill my friends in it? I, mean, I don't even want to play it if I can't kill people in it. <laughs> don't be sad. It's okay. It's okay. They'll patch in verses later. It's all right. Red may have been strong and skilled, but against the awesome power of nature, he was merely a man. He never stood a chance. All around, things just kept getting worse. But I heard that Guardian Ratha had survived and returned to Hecola Island. I went there to see Red's old monster again. Is this the first Monster Hunter story focused thing? Or the second or the fifth? Like I'm, I'm as I've said before, I fell out of the series after the Wii entry. You were given Yeah, this looks really tales of. I was thinking that earlier. This is destiny. Mm, 3DS, thank you. Like, I'm down for the concept. I mean, I always wanted to get into Monster Hunter. It sounded on paper like something I would like. It just was... It, the Wii version was terrible. Strange happenings and the wings of ruin. The pits are appearing everywhere. And they're emitting a strange light. Light that makes me want to kill others. In an online multiplayer. Okay, if I can't play Longsword, is this even really Monster Hunter? What's this whole idea of forming kinship with monsters? How do you control them? I guess that's not true. We all know Sword Board is actually the best build in Monster Hunter. Help riders of their own will. And the bonds between monsters and riders are just like your bond with Sukino. Shining what kind of power does Ratha really have? Why are all of these pits appearing? And who are those people who want to take Ratha for themselves? Oh my god, it's Bravely Default. All I have are questions. Spoilers. If there's worry or doubt in your voice, Ratha will become anxious too. He needs to know that you will protect him no matter what. I can sense the flames of his life force weakening. The burden of such great power 
is too much. Does anybody actually main switch axe? I'm just curious. What's a uh... a voice? Oh god, what's the name of that one weapon? Hang on, hang on. Riders can bond with monsters. Surely you can groove with fellow humans. They have the power of kinship. They're friends. They're monsties. Humans carry the Why are you calling them monsties? That makes them strong. <laughs> of all things to call them. My friends here taught me that. I believe in the strength of humanity. And I don't. I've been studying humanity my whole life. So I'm guessing Stories 1 was the 3DS game. Here we go, okay. Insect Glaive, that's what I'm thinking of. That's that's the best one right there, that's where it's at. Real people run Insect Glaive. Yeah, this is, like I said, this is pretty Tales of. No offense intended, but Tales of is extremely anime. Thank you, Cat Horse, as always. Now, that being said, if someone donates for this, I'm okay with that. I, like I said, I've been kind of wanting to get into the Monster Hunter series several times, and every time I've tried, it's gone badly. <laughs> Maybe this will finally be the one I actually like, you know? You knew. Yeah, I was gonna say, what is Monster Hunter's main go focus? The freaking combat! You're fighting giant monsters! will be joining Monster Hunter Stories 2 as one of the new monsties in the first free title update coming soon after the game's release. Please stop doing the hands You thing. can get an early peek at the game with the Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin trial version starting on June 25th, which also carries your progress over to the full game release just a few weeks later on July 9th. That's not the It's a visual though. It's a dating sim. Monster Hunter Rise, the dating sim. And we have even more content coming, including a new collaboration on the rise. Let's find out more. Listen, Fury, Fury or sorry, Furry Philosopher. Me and my monsties have got this, okay? So I'm, I'm actually curious, is the little cat dude who's with you only in the, the last one? Or is that like a regular feature? Like, is that, is that a franchise thing, or was that just in that one game? Get ready. Oh, I should write this down, I guess. Feeling. What will it be? Moon's blessing emerge. <laughs> you have missed nothing, Blow of Alex. Ugh, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still kind of in Stark mode. I don't know why. I think it's because of the fact that the Take-Two conference was literally nothing but a Zoom call! Or take two, two K game, whatever it's two K gaming, two K gaming, two K gaming. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I get that the cat thing is like a, a mascot. What I mean by that is, in one of the Monster Hunters, and I forget which one, it's actually like it's with you, right? It's part of the gameplay, and it helps you like craft stuff, and you can set it up and customize it and stuff like that, right? That's what I'm asking: is that gameplay feature a regular thing? Listen, Dr. Winter, I'm here to do one thing. Kill chaos. <laughs> See, that's what I was wondering, just his mask. Thank you. Or maybe that's just world? I don't know. I got nothing. I know nothing. Okay, so... Uh, Resident Evil 8 versus multiplayer. That's what they've shown, Blue Up Alex, is Resident Evil 8 versus multiplayer and this. With all the new updates to Monster Hunter Rise and the launch of Monster Hunter Stories 2 this summer. We can't wait to hear about your own stories of adventure. Well, that's not the only thing Capcom has in store for us this July. Fans of Phoenix Wright will have new chapters to explore with the release of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. North American and European future attorneys will finally be able to get their hands on the Great Ace Attorney Adventures and the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. I am happy about this, only to be clear. In Japan. You'll travel back in time to the late 19th We already knew this. In fact, I've already reported on this. 
but I'm happy about this. Phoenix Wright's ancestor in this action-packed prequel. Now let's hear more about the story. So then, let us unravel this mystery. Welcome to the center of the world. Yeah, I, I'm probably gonna buy this. In fact, I think this is already on the list. This country is incredible. I will become a lawyer. I have to. I don't know, there's several ace games on the list. So then, let us unravel this mystery and discover what events. Me too, who girl. Me too. Who are you? I know that the trilogy actually sold pretty well, which is probably part of why they're translating so many and releasing so many of these recently. Let us engage in the art of deduction, Mr. Narrow. Herlock Sholmes is awesome. I will hear nothing else. It would see the MGM whatever studio owns it this week can go to hell. The defense demands its right to a cross-examination. Objection! Your testimony completely contradicts the facts. Okay, that wasn't the greatest objection I've ever heard, but I get it. It's British. My lord, with all due that was a better objection. That's an interesting mechanic. I mean, I played in English so I can understand it, Caspian. <laughs> I know, strange. I'd, I'd, I'd like to actually be able to read the game I'm playing. July 27th, that's what so I was looking for. 10 new cases and eight mini escapades where you can take on the role of a defense attorney. Now, we all want to see some gameplay, right? Let's take a closer first look at two gameplay features new to the franchise. Her face hurt after Chronicle. she did this shoot. Dance of deduction. That's not presumption. Examination. That is deduction. Her face hurt after she did this Hello, shoot. I'm Jonathan, Capcom's marketing brand manager for the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. So this is the capital of Great Britain. Where to? The Supreme Court in Whitehall, if you wouldn't mind. The Capcom team is thrilled to present two new gameplay features, Dance of Deduction and Summation Examination, coming to the Ace Attorney series. Oh, I don't remember that one. The Dance of Deduction. While investigating to prove your client's innocence, players will come across conspicuous situations that require further examination with the help of Ryanovsky's legal aid, Suzanne. I love his pose. The brilliance of deduction from Detective Herlock. See, you can tell he's the villain because he's Russian. And you can tell he's Russian because of the hat. Herlock will proceed to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. A grandiose, yet flawed, series of conjectures. Very true, Blow of Alex. Very true. My God, he's I, okay. I was joking about the Russian thing, but apparently he is a villain. He's a Bolshevik, and he is a Bolshevik. So, my bad. And his name is Bolshevik, cause I. <laughs> Ryunosuke and Susato will then discuss to correct the flaws in Herlock's deductions. At this point, players will be prompted to search for clues that help identify the errors in the detective's logic and reveal the truth to the mystery. <laughs> okay, that, that by itself sounds like a good gameplay feature. A detective shows up, deduces stuff badly, and it is now your job to correct them. And observations. That How actually sounds legit. Based on the new information. Upon uncovering the truth, Ryunosuke and Herlock enter into a semi-metaphorical, semi-literal dance that brings them to the conclusion of the dance of deduction.
I mean, that is one hell of a disguise, I'll be honest. Although I'm curious what her voice sounds like. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Still Russian, of course, because she still has the hat. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'm down. In courtroom battles, players will attempt to convince six jurors of the innocence of their client. Their progress will be displayed and represented by two scales of justice. Why is one of the jurors just playing with a knife? One white, representing a not guilty verdict. Objection! In summation examination, take the stand to face off against the jurors. All of whom... So, let's see. We've got rich, evil person. A maid. You'll have to identify the evil the guy and sway the jury in your favor. The knife killer. Examine each statement yeah, that guy. And select two contradicting jurors to call out the flaws in their logic. An old lady who's probably, you know, cantankerous. Um Objection. I'm not sure what the other two are going for. And there's me, obviously. Ready to provide evidence from the court record to help prove the contradiction in their claims. When you successfully point out one of these contradictions among the jurors, you might just change their minds, too. With a slam of their fist, each juror you persuade will send a fiery ball towards the scales above and literally tip the scales of justice in your favor. That gives me an idea for a setting. ...and persuade the jury to help prove your client's innocence. Objection! My lord, with all due respect, this is an outrage! This has just been a small taste of the exciting... Is this the guy who slams his leg on the on the stand, by the way? We are very excited to get this game in the hands of... The, the, the prosecutor. ...and diehard fans alike. Or whatever they're calling Thanks for watching. It already seems like I have a bunch of games to catch up on. I feel there are so some bad exciting for this new adventures and titles to look forward to. Well, that's a look at the new premieres from Capcom. But what about esports? Let's close out today's showcase with a few words from two of the stars of Capcom Fighters, Rob TV and Vicious. They'll tell us what's been going on with Capcom Esports, including updates on the Capcom Pro Tour, Intel World Open, Street Fighter League, and all the other content on Capcom Fighters. Over to you guys. So, we could probably cut off the conference now, if we're being honest. Yeah, no kidding, Leander. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the Capcom Esports presentation for E3 2021. My name is wow. Vicious. I'm commentator for the Capcom Pro Tour as well as Street Fighter League. I think that is actually it. I'm going to hold off, but wow. What's going on, Rob? Oh, my. So, Resident Evil 8 multiplayer, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Ace Attorney Chronicles, and that's it. And I think that's a perfect it. word to describe what we have for everyone today. Street Fighter 5. And we already knew about Ace Attorney Chronicles and Monster Hunter Stories 2. Electricity in the air. Nice. No. Nice. Nice. Um, that was nasty. And there might be some people at home, vicious, who don't fully know what competitive Street Fighter Five is. The long and the short of it is this: <laughs> we travel all around the world, state to state, country to country, and we try to bring our opponent's life bar from a hundred all the way down. Nine to ventures. Mega Man X Nine. Dang good doing it. That's right, Rob. If you think you're the best in your region, sign up. Capcom Pro Tour to prove it. And I mean, it's also possible we'll get some Capcom stuff tomorrow at the Nintendo conference. Yeah, Mega Man X 8 was on the PS2, and it was actually better than uh, Mega Man X 7, even though it used the same general engine and style. $5,000 on the line for each tournament, but that money alone, that's not the big, that's not what's really at stake here. It's about making it to the granddaddy of them all, Capcom Cut. <laughs> Item just reset in grand finals of Capcom Cup. By the way, Balrog main. Anyone else out there? No one? Okay, that's cool. Both of them had Axel Ventures, sadly. And that's a place that you are very, very familiar with. That's right. We take all of our events and broadcast it live from the stage. It's not a Zoom call. That's true. 
This is not a good zoom. Oh god, it's a zoom kill. Why'd you say that? 2021, we have 32 events going on in the Capcom Pro Tour, spanning across 19 different territories. So there's so yeah, many no opportunities for players from around the world to get that ticket into Capcom Cup this season. I'm absolutely excited because again, that is a Yeah, it, it, the, the the simplest way to describe Mega Man X8 is it is Mega Man X7 done better. Like, it's pretty much the same game in terms of, like, the style and the approach and the graphics and the way they were taking the story and the characters. It's just they actually did it properly. They made it a good game instead of X7, you know? Although, if you know the behind the scenes, that makes sense. What is the worst E3? One million troops is probably the one that comes to my mind immediately. Because as terrible as this E3 has been, this isn't even in the same zip code as Bad E3. I've said that before, too. Season after season, non-stop action, six teams of three, duke it out. Like, there has been so many just absolutely awkward, cringy, terrible, terrible E3s in the past. don't want to miss because normally we only have 1v1. God. But now you actually have your teammates at your back and every decision that you make is not just about you anymore. Look for more news on Street Fighter. Yeah, you, sometimes there's some funny ones. Sometimes we have hilariously bad E3s. The movement. Oh, What's happening? It's so good. Let's not forget. No, Verma. Intel World Opening is happening right now. Top players representing 11 regions around the world. Yeah, this year is a disappointing A3. And I, I know it, someone somewhere is going to think or say or type, well, but it's online. <laughs> That's not... But no. If anything, this probably costs tremendously less money and time than the live events usually do. In fact, I guarantee with total certainty this cost less time and money and, frankly, effort than the actual uh, live events usually did. You know, no need to set up the giant booths, no need to fly people out there and take time away from their jobs to, to actually sit there and present the thing and stand around for several days and yada yada yada. That's not an excuse, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, Von Falkenstein. Online E3 is something you have the capacity to do pre... Uh, okay. I know this is going to sound weird, but I love streaming, right? But the thing is, my pre-recorded content will technically always be superior in quality because pre-recorded content is something I could do a second take on, right? I mean, that, that, that varies based on the specific content. Obviously, if I was doing commentary, the live, in-the-moment commentary is, is going to be better than a pre-recorded thing that's scripted. But my point is, when you're doing an event, when you're doing some kind of scripted event, having that advantage of pre-recorded means it should be better by basically every metric. Like Guile's hair there. Thanks, guys. It's been a really exciting season so far, and I can't wait to see how this plays out on the road to Capcom Cup. Remember to check out Capcom Fighters Twitch and YouTube channels for more information and to watch the latest matches. So that's a wrap for Capcom at E3 this year. Let's recap what we all saw. Resident Evil Village. Oh my God! It really is a recap. Installment of the survival horror experience and RE Verse as part of the franchise's 25th anniversary. We have new adventures to embark on in the world of Monster Hunter, with Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin, and Monster Hunter Rise. And don't forget to go back in time with the great Ace Attorney Chronicles to tap into the family history I will agree that Streaminations are better than Ruminations, but that's not here Finally, there. don't miss out on the eSports fun. Make sure you catch the latest... So I'm just gonna do this. There's something for everyone here today. On Twitter, and make sure you check out the Capcom virtual booth on the E3 portal to watch all these videos again and more. I'm Rachel Querico, aka Seltzer. Thank you for being part of the Capcom experience at E3 this year. And that is a grand total of 30 minutes to the T. Yeah, we're we're done. What a waste of my time. I am sorry, everyone. That was pathetic and terrible. Okay, and, and I want to be very clear about this, okay? <clears throat> that was a waste of time. Not just for us. There was 
no reason for Capcom to have their own separate slot to do this 30-minute nothing. This is literally a waste of their time and their money. People were pulled from doing actual work to throw this together for no reason. <laughs> Everything they announced could have literally been tweeted out. I, I, I'm sorry, that, that sounds... that's. They could have just thrown the Monster Hunter Stories 2 trailer and the Ace Attorney Chronicles gameplay trailer up on YouTube, tweeted both, and been done. Instead, they got this poor woman out there, got the set, got the stage, got the footage, edited this thing together. People burnt time and money on this thing, and that's why this pisses me off so much. It's this literal waste on display. God. Now, I wanted to focus on that first, because that's the most objective I can get here. Because I love Capcom games, and none of them were here! Anything about Devil May Cry? No. Okay, that's, that's cool, that's cool. Anything about Dragon's Dogma? No. Breath of Fire? No. Any of the Mega Man franchises? No. Oh my god. That's that's true. We did get DMC over. I mean, actually, it's that's really Neo more than anything else at this point, but whatever. Uh, okay, okay. I'm just I, whew, I'm just gonna cut off the local recording, because that's that's all that is.